Hey everybody, Sean here from Shooty School. This is an advanced video about the filters on the Grooves tab. If you don't know how to search on the Grooves tab yet, I have a separate beginner's video for Easy Drummer 3 and Superior Drummer 3 in the description. You should probably watch that first, okay? So let's get started. So there's two purposes to this video. One is just acknowledging that you can reverse engineer the filters workflow, which is fun and quick, and we'll cover that first. Second is the reason why I came up with this video, and it's about working with third-party MIDI and your limitations with the filters, which might solve some headaches right now or down the road. So one thing we can do, let's just acknowledge the right workflow. If I want a blues beat, I'll select the blues. And if I want it to be a swing, here are all my blues swing beats down here. Sounds like it's working really well. I'll clear all those out. That's the workflow we already know. There's one thing that I want to point out, a cool way to, to look at these libraries you may or may not have. I have a bunch installed right now. <clears throat> if I look under my superior libraries, the Area 33 MIDI library, <clears throat> the words Area 33 don't tell me anything about the MIDI inside. I know what it is because I played with it a bit, but you might not know what it is. Now, I could select filters and try and trigger MIDI out of there, but we can reverse engineer it and we could select Area 33 first, wait a minute, and then the leftover filters that describe exactly what type of MIDI is in Area 33 remain here and highlighted. So now we know Area 33 is metal MIDI. There's some double kick, there's some shuffle in there, and we have, you know, a lot of basic terms. There's 4-4, four, four. there's only 4-4 four, four MIDI in there. That's good information to know. That's how you can reverse engineer it. We'll do it with one more. We'll do it in Superior. This looks, it, it, this is an identical workflow, okay? So when it comes to decades, like, I don't know what is included with decades. I know it's an SDX, but I'm not sure the style of the MIDI perform. So if I click on it, I can see, okay, there's some rock MIDI in there. Ah, there's jazz in Latin. Now that's very particular. Now I know Decades has jazz in Latin. And look, there's March, which is probably some snare work, I'm guessing. Swirls, meaning maybe some of this MIDI is meant for brush work. Like that's important information. So this is reverse engineering the filters instead of clicking on them, but clicking on your folders and then just viewing the filters, that gives you a good idea of what's inside of your MIDI folders. And of course this works with my drum MIDI packs and whatever tune track I have uh, post metal installed. So there's post metal, all these filters are changing. So that's the first thing, which I think is pretty cool. Reverse engineering the filters. Um, here's the reason, I'll clear all, here's the reason why I wanted to make this tutorial is a lot of people, I'll hop back over to Easy because I have more user MIDI, uh, excuse me, third-party MIDI installed. I have DrumForge, Get Good Drums, Groove Monkey, Odd Grooves, and uh, Ergotone. <clears throat> so when you select, let me clear all, if I say I want metal MIDI and I select it, all my third-party MIDI is not highlighted anymore, implying there's no metal MIDI in there, but I know there is. You know, same thing if I click on blues, for example. See how all my third-party MIDI grays out? Here's the, here's the point of the whole video, and then I'll elaborate in case you want to get going right now. Third-party MIDI does not respond to the genre filters or the play style filters. So if you select something in the genre or play style, since that metadata isn't in your third-party MIDI, it will completely exclude it, even though the styles of music actually are. The metadata isn't there. So that's why the MIDI goes away, and you'll notice in the second column if I do the same thing. There's got to be a ton of shuffle beats in my Groove Monkey Drums library. I, have all the, I own all their stuff. But the shuffle metadata is not in there. Therefore, it excludes it from the search. So that's the point of this video, and I'll elaborate a little bit more. Um, it seems like this is a guess. I'm not going to bother tune track and try and figure this out. But when it comes to these more creative search tags, which is a bummer that they don't work because they're more creative and fun to use, 
you know, I don't think that metadata is embedded in the actual MIDI file. This is just a guess. I think it's in a like a text file that's external that the MIDI files refer to, which is why this third-party MIDI has no access to it. That's a guess. I feel pretty good about that guess. So if we want to include third-party MIDI in our overall search results, which you know what I'm talking about because you saw my other search tab videos, right? Links are in the description if you haven't. If I not only want to search my Easy Drummer, my Superior Drummer, and my Easy X's, but I also want to search my third-party MIDI and know all of my options, I need to exclude genre and play style. But type, time signature, power hand, and the other two, which is instrument and resolution, these other five do, these two do not. So I could say I want a straight beat in 4-4. I want a ride. And let's just do that. Look, there's options in all of my third-party MIDI for all the columns except genre and play style. The second I add one of these, any of them, my third-party MIDI gets booted out of the search results. It's unfortunate, but that's, that's a fact. And hopefully I cleared up a headache for you or a headache that you will be coming at you in the future. Um, just to acknowledge that let me clear all these. Just to acknowledge, Groove Monkey has a huge blues folder, yet the blues genre filter does not highlight. It's impossible. Okay. And one last note for advanced users that are really using the Grooves tab in detail as much as I do or uh, intend to do is some of the look under Power Hand and Instrument. Some of these especially the hi-hat, maybe the ride. I haven't really tested the ride yet. Even though Groove Monkey MIDI comes into Tune Track with no problem because it's standard MIDI, you know, drum forge and get good drums don't. Their mapping's different. That's something that can be solved in a different video. But even though the Groove Monkey MIDI comes into Easy Drummer perfectly, some of the articulations don't register as this metadata. So if I say I want I'm in the Grooves Monkey folder right now. If I say I want a hi-hat, it, actually it's not even highlighted there. It is right there. Let me clear all. If I say I want a regular hi-hat, look, all my third-party MIDI's gone. Yet, if I say I want an open hi-hat, my third-party's back. If I want a hi-hat pedal, my third-party's back. Except for Drum Forge, which I don't have much of. And a closed hi-hat, my third-party's back. So the mapping or the metadata of regular hi-hat just isn't universal to the third party. So keep in mind that maybe the instruments that have extra articulations also might mess up your search. And that's just a last note. So point of the story is, is you can learn more about your MIDI packs by reverse engineering how you use the filters by selecting the MIDI packs folder over here or products folder over here and watch the filters highlight and then you know what's in there. Or when using third-party MIDI, you should exclude the genre and play style filter columns. You can even click on them and make them leave if you want to stay organized. But yet the other five columns work really well with a side note of instruments that have extra articulations. Uh, at the moment, I only know to avoid the straight hi-hat, which can easily be compensated for the other with the other three hi-hat articulations. And maybe the ride as well. Let's take a look. That ride works. Yeah, ride ride seems to work. Side stick. Yeah. Now we know where we stand. And I hope this clears up a headache for you, or hope this at least prevents a headache coming at you from the near future. I don't think the third-party programs can help this limitation, because I don't think they have the access to the Tune Track special sauce filter metadata. You know, so it's hard to blame them, but I don't officially know. Those are strong assumptions I feel good about. This is Sean from Shooty School. If you got something from this video, please comment below. Check out my free Facebook and Discord Tune Track themed communities. If I made your day, please consider contributing to me. That's how this channel survives. And I hope you rock on. Have a great day. Peace.